now it is recording. Okay, now you're gonna do a square, uh, circle with a square. Okay, so you're gonna go up, breathe in, breathe out. We're gonna do this warm up exercise every week, so you will, you will know. You don't have to memorize it. It's gonna be second nature to you by week five. One more. Up, breathe in, breathe out. Circle the other way, make sure every joint is comfortable, nothing is hurting, breathe out. Breathe in and up, breathe out. Three more, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Last one, breathe in and breathe out. Okay. Relax your shoulders. Hi. How are you feeling? Good? Good. Very good. Okay, let's talk about, uh, let's review, because I, we kind of talk about stuff, then I didn't have a good visual, so I want to review that. And we are going to probably in 20 minutes or so, we're going to take a break so you can get some water. And also, I want to talk about the hands and arms today at the end. So um, during the break, go wash your hands and also have some kind of um, uh, a moisturizer, whatever the moisturizer or cream or anything that you use um, during the break. So that's what we're going to do. But Right now, let me, I am going to share screen, go back to D. Slide. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I meant to do is to okay. Okay. Can you see the slide? Good. Okay. So it's not good. Slide number two. Okay. So Remember the wind points that um, I talked about last week? In Chinese medicine, um, there are some wind points that where uh, when, it, when it gets cold or when you, um, when you sweat and when you don't take care of yourself and when you don't wipe or just get cold, um, the wind carries the evil which is like the cold viruses or whatever that gets into your body from outside that is harmful for your body. Uh, it's called wind evil. And these are the points that they enter. So um, we talked about wind gate, which is, let me get my pointer. Um, so these are two points, it's right here. And if you feel this is your uh, spine of your uh, shoulder blades, if you feel the first bony part of the shoulder blades, that's the spine. So if you go close to your spine, in between your spine and um, the scapula, that's your, so it's kind of like right there. If you reach back so that's the area i just wanted wanted to give you a, a visual for the general um location of those wind points so that's the wind gate the next one is wind talus which is right here so 
It's right, if you touch your head. I don't know what you did, but you messed up me up. Can you see it? If you go uh, behind your head and towards your spine, you're gonna feel the bump that it's the end of your skull, right in the middle and the back, right where the skull ends and neck starts. So that's the wind palace. So it's all kind of in the back of your neck and the back of your, um, on, on your uh, upper back. So the last one, this is the wind pool. This is when you get the um, headache, tension headache, sometimes that's where it starts too. But basically, so that's the mastoid process is the big bone, kind of like behind your ear. So if you go behind the big bone behind your ear, and if you go more towards your um, center, you're gonna feel another bump where your fingers kind of sinks. So that's where the wind pool is, it's right there. So basically it's all in the back of your neck and the uh, upper back. So that's why it's important. It goes, um, it goes in uh, with what we already know and what we already do. We wear scarves, we wear hoodies when it's cold. Um, you feel good when, you, when, when you're cold and keep your collars up or when you get the hoodies, it feels good. So that, that makes sense. Your body's telling you to protect <laughs> right here. And also you could get the, um, so when you come home from being cold, you can just hop in the shower and just really focus on warming, getting the, um, the hot water in that area too. So that is one of the good way to, uh, for the cold and uh, uh, cold prevention. Um, and make sure when you, after get out of the shower, make sure you um, dry yourself and keep, keep covered. So that was the win point. So, and somebody was telling me about the ear points and this is, this is to hear this a lot of a lot of uh, points, but it's it, it's just too overwhelming if you try to learn everything. But this is available online, so I will send a link to the PDF version of this to Jan, so you could uh, you can have your own copy. But basically, there are so can you see this is the earlobe here. So this is outside of the ear, right? And this is your side of your head. Okay. So, and as I mentioned last week, the uh, this is like the upside down person in the fetal position. So this is head and this is upper, so this is the, um, this is the ear, this is the ear hole, right? So up here, so there's the concaved uh, uh, area of the ear. So here and here is the concaved area of the ear, right? So the lower part of the ear is the upper part of the body, meaning. So right in the middle, this is heart. And these area are lungs and trachea, all the, um, the respiratory um, area. And right in the middle, so if you look at all these are the kind of like internal organ cavity. So if this is the chest, this area is the abdomen. So, and this is the stomach, duodenum, pancreas. So these are all like in the digestive area. And here is a lower abdominal. So you see the bladder here, 
prostate, ureter, large intestine, so in this area, right? And this triangular area, so I'm going to have, I'm going to stop the share and maybe I can show you my ear model, but this is the triangular area, which is the pelvic cavity. So, so we have like pelvic cavity area, uterus is right here, urethra, external genitalia, so it's all in here. And if you see these ridge of the ear, upper part here is the uh, lower limbs. So you see heel is here, toes, ankles, and this is hip joint and the hip area. But if you go here, this along this ridge is the spinal cord. So this is the sacrum area. This is the lumbar vertebrae, which is the lower back. So mid back, thoracic, and this is the neck area. So if this is the face and head area, and this is the neck area, if you have a tight neck, this will be a good part, a good place to just kind of, you know, pinch your ear and massage and see if, if you feel anything. Those are good part for your tight neck, shoulders, um, headache, tension headache, right? So, and this is a little tiny, um, kind of like a little ditch in the uh, between outer part of the ear and this uh, ridges. These are the arm area. So these are the lower limbs. This is the upper limb. Okay, so that's the elbow. That's wrist, and those are like wrist and fingers. So I just wanted to give you a like kind of rough idea of what this ear points are. And for, for a singular organ, do you have to do both ears? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I and also yes, and this is um, according to different systems. And this is a combination of French system and Chinese system. And also I think it's a German system too. So they have like Chinese gallbladder point and French gallbladder point. So there are so, that's why there's so many. Um, and sometimes, you know, when um, liver is on the, on the right side of the, the body. So when you have a, a like cirrhosis, the liver issues, they say use the right side of the right uh, right ear or the limbs. They say one way or the other. If you have injuries, you look at both ears and see which side is more tender. Or if you have any vasculature changes or skin changes, um, you could use both ears just in case, but you might see one side uh, is more tender than the other. Okay, so I think that's enough for the ear parts. If you have any questions, we can talk more about it. Okay, so, and before we move on, we wanted to talk about, I mean, not we, I wanted to mention uh, yin and yang symbol because everybody's just so familiar with it. And, um, and if not, I, a yin and yang comes up, it will come up so many um, times. So I just wanted to mention, this is the yin and yang. Yin is the black part. So the yin, yin is this black part. Yang is this white part. So everything is either yin or yang or in between yin and yang. And nothing is 
completely yin. There's always yang within yin and yin within yang. So like female is yin and male is yang, but we all have maleness within female and men, maleness within femaleness in men. Anyway, everything is not just one complete one thing. Yin and yang is always interrelated, interdependent of mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And the, as, so this is the beginning of the yang, which becomes the maximum yin becomes the beginning of yang. As the yang gets bigger, bigger and ultimately becomes yin. So that's like the basic concept. And you also probably have seen those little lines and what they are. I don't really know details, but the basic information about these lines are, so the solid line is yang. So you have three solid lines. That means this is the ultimate yang, right? This is where the, the most yang is. So hence three solid line. The opposing to that is three broken lines. So it's a uh, broken line means yin. So oh. that's the, I just noticed those. like the ultimate yin. And you probably have seen like people's houses or, and also in a Chinatown, you probably have seen this octagon with different lines. And that's basically, those lines are the translation of the sections of the yin and yang uh, symbols. So basically they're saying that it's the same thing. This is the biggest part of yang. This is the biggest part of yin. This is yang in mostly in yin. Right. This is where uh, yang gets more within yin, and there's less at this point. There's less yin than the yang, vice versa. That kind of does the basic idea of yin and yang, and uh, uh, this is um, octagon is called bagua. Ba is A in Gua. I don't know what Gua stands for, but it's called Bagua. Okay. Any questions so far? <laughs> is it simple enough? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, and I look around and you're going to start to see those yin and yang as little lines. And I think in the um, Korean flag has this with the yin and yang symbol with the, in the four corners, it has these lines too. So that's interesting. So anyway, moving on. So now we're gonna talk about the muscles. So today our main topic is chest and shoulders and it's, it's all upper back, um, upper body. So front and, part, uh, front and back. So we kind of started talking about it last week, but I just wanted to give you a little more um, visuals. So, so that's your chest. Wow. Okay, so. That is the major chest muscle. And this is where we were. So here is your clavicle. See how your clavicle attaches to everywhere, right? So attached to the upper um, part, it's like the neck muscle, neck and shoulders. Like look at this huge muscle. And also there's the chest muscle. So when we were first doing the massage, we were kind of working on this area, right? So the clavicle goes from here to there. Mm -hmm. so along this bone. Yeah. And when you do the massage with the um the uh with the hands, so we were 
kind of massage in this area. So see how big the chest muscle is. And when this contracts, it pulls your shoulder forward, it crunches you forward. So this needs to get loosened up first before you start working on the back. So if you peel this big chest muscle, there's another layers, but they are, so here is the clavicle, right? This is another little muscle, it's called, uh, this is the pec minor. So this is directly attached to the end of this shoulder, where shoulder, where chest becomes shoulder. So this is also, uh, this muscle, when this tightens, it pulls this way. Right, so again, it pulls your shoulder forward and down. So, so we're working, so first, so as you could see, so this needs to be loosened up. Also, so here's the breastbone right here. And everything, so the chest muscle is attached to that, right? Because you can't, you can't see the uh, breastbone here. So all the, um, the sheath, of the tendon and the connective tissues connected to your uh, breastbone. And also this is the uh, intercostals. So there's muscles in between your ribs to, it, it controls um, breathing. So by kind of working on these areas, these areas, um, it also helps when this gets tight, it's it, it makes your breathing difficult. So it's more than one way. It's really good to uh, loosen this up and focus on getting these area um, loosened up. So that's the chest. And this is the side view. Let me see, so this is the chest we talked about. And the neck muscle is also, it's all neck muscle is connecting back of your head, even from your chin area all the way. So you can see uh, a large muscle group and large muscle is really powerful. So once yeah, they get crunched, it, it really get crunched. So it's really hard to uh, get this loosened up. And as you can see, we're made of front part and back part. So if these front area gets tight, all these gonna be stretched out and it's, it's all gonna be affected. So that's this shoulder joint is so intricate. So it's pulled one way and it just messes up. So it's in that way, it's also very um, important to uh, get this all balanced. So you don't wanna be tilted forward or tilted back. So this part is one layer pulled, right? And here's the clavicle. And here is that spine of your um, shoulder blades. The shoulder blades right here. And here is your, um, a head of your arm. Uh, the humerus. So there is the muscle attached. I'm going to talk more about going on the back side, but um, muscles attached from front and back, muscles attached from front to the back, no, back to the front, <laughs> front to the back. So it's just so intricate. And the back muscle, another huge muscle. So this is where we normally get really tight shoulder and neck. Mm -hmm. So um, the larger, the large um, surface muscle is this area. So no wonder once you get the shoulder tightness, it's all kind of goes down to your, well, when you get the neck tightness goes down to the shoulder, when you have the tight shoulder goes to the neck because it's the one big muscle. So here is the edge of the shoulder blaze. Yeah. So when you peel this, there are more interior muscles and 
This is the inner edge of the shoulder blades, right? And these guys, so these guys pulls the shoulder blades toward right here, right? So these guys pulls the shoulder blades. When you're pulling the shoulder blades toward each other, these guys will do. Also the, you know, the, the surface layer muscle does it too. And these guys, when, so this muscle, and remember muscle only either contracts or relaxes. So that's, that's all they can do. So when this contracts, it pulls your shoulders back, right? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So it pulls your shoulder blades, shoulders back, and these pulls your shoulder blades toward each other. So when you peel, I think I have one more. If you go, ooh, ooh, if you go further out, this is the deepest. So there are more muscles that connect the, um, the shoulders and arms, it's so intricate. So again, not one muscle um, works independently. Everything works independently. So anything happens to one little muscle, every, everybody else is um, affected. We're so delicate. <laughs> okay, any questions so far for the anatomy part? Can we see the lungs? Lungs? We don't have the, so lungs from the, from here, lungs are, basically it's all in here, right? That's your lungs underneath. Thank so you. basically all the rib cage, that, that's where lungs are. And also on this side, you have the little little bump here, right? So there's, and there's, there, there's your heart. Oh, isn't that cute? You no heart, I know. <laughs> Broken heart. <laughs> I have a question about the function of the muscle. You said that they can either relax or contract. Mm -hmm. And when they say, when, when they speak about strengthening a muscle, what does mm -hmm. that actually mean then? Strengthening is the strengthening the, uh, the ability to contract and also to increase the uh, volume oh, okay. of the muscles. Okay, any other questions? I love those questions. And uh, Akio, yes. as we get older, we have to sort of like do um, Resistant, resistant exercise to develop muscle because we lose muscles. Yes, we age. We, we don't. We don't lose. Mu well, we kind of lose muscles, but we have uh, muscles builds and breaks down constantly. But as we get older, we the rate of breaking down gets faster. Accelerates. Huh? <laughs> Is it kind of like losing elasticity? Yes, but it's unlike yeah. rubber bands. Rubber bands, right. when it gets old, it snaps and it, that's it. But right. that's not it for our bodies. As we take care of ourselves yeah. and if we, uh, when we condition them, we can always get stronger. We can always increase the size of the muscles and we can always improve our muscles. So. Okay, good. So is that, always get owning, is that owning your muscles also? Is that owning? I'm sorry? Is that owning? Toning, toning. What's toning? Toning is, I think, kind of 
con combination of strengthening and con conditioning and also working on the balances of a uh, different, you know, how different muscles works, um, you know, together. So toning, when you tone your body, I think they talk about a little more of a, a, a slimming too, when in, in generally when they talk about tone your body, but I think it's more of conditioning and kind of putting it back together to the optimum functioning units as we are made to. And going back to your question, uh, Melvin, um, the strength training is always important. Strength adding resistance to the muscle is the only way to uh, strengthening your muscle, to keep your muscle um, functional. So walking works your heart, but also when you move, you're adding resistance. Um, when you do in standing and the uh, doing the squats, you are adding the resistance from the your body weights and the gravity. So you have to with your your muscle has to withstand the that resistance too. So those are good resistance training. But adding additional weight or resistance band that adds just another or extra um, resistance to the uh, the muscle. Yeah. Uh, um, Akio, uh, is a, a, a muscle in spasm? Is that mm -hmm. from over contraction or is that an electrical type thing or something else? It is an over contraction. All right. Right, because when it gets, it's when it's mostly it's the um, plus electrical imp impulses because we're made with water and that conducts the electrical impulses right. and you know we have the chemical imbalances that affects right. the uh, the muscle muscle contraction is um, related to the you know, the electrolytes and balances and, and, you know, the- So we, either, either one, so either one. So uh, it's, it's the both. Both. The contraction yeah, okay. is caused by some kind uh, of electrolyte right. imbalances. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Does that make good. sense? But yes. it is the, the, the cause Actual. is the over contraction. Of, right. Okay. Um, yeah. Sometimes when you're do, dehydrated, do, you get. Do you have Do you have suggestions on how to counteract that when that happens? Um, A muscular movement. Yes, like, we can talk about that while uh, when today when at, we work at, on at the, another um, time. Okay, yeah. I understand. Thank but you. But the uh, the hydration check for your hydration. Right. And have you like. If you're in a hot day and you sweat it a lot, but you only drank water, sometimes that um, throughout the uh, electrolytes uh, balances too, and that um, oh. that causes the uh, cramps too. So oh. okay, um, electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, which is same as electrolyte um, imbalances too, but um, overuse. But I think mostly being cold, the temperature and dehydration is the main cause of the, um, like, especially the Charlie horses, like a nighttime calf. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Shoot. Any other questions? We good? Okay, let's take five minute break and bring some lotion and we're going to talk about the hands then we're going to do the other body parts okay get some water get some lotions go wash your hands too
And if you have any questions, I'll take questions too. I think it's a break. Yes, it is. Yes, it's a break. Okay. I had to leave, so I didn't know. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have but two I... more minutes. Okay. Good. And um, so if you can go wash your hands and bring back the uh, some kind of lotion uh, okay. that you use on your hands. Okay. Then we're going to do some hand massage. I love it. So I guess this all gets, well, this gets, I'm going to throw this away. And this is tonight, I think. Well, very cute. Okay, wash my hands. So Jan, isn't this yep. a fascinating class? It is. <laughs> oh, man. It, wow. br it brings back memories wow. because I was a physical education teacher oh. and pre-ex pre for that is pre-med were most of my first three years classes. Okay. So I've forgotten about all this and how many... <laughs> Oh, good for you. It's like a little refresher course for you now. It, it is. <laughs> okay. After, uh, I won't say how many years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm enjoying this totally. All right. Everybody back? Yep. What is this light? I'm going to block it out. Okay. I am using, um, I forgot what I'm using. It's the, it's a, it's a oil. I'm blanking out of the name. It's, uh, it's not jojoba. It's the, uh, I'll think about it. I'll tell you next week, but I like this. It's not too thick, but it's, it, it gives enough lubrication to slide. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do, but any type of cream or moisturizer works. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's put a good amount of the cream on your palms. And when you're putting the lotion on, make sure you are warming up between your palms making it warm and let's just put all over just to your wrist too. Just put like how you normally put 
make sure it's It's enough to put some um, pressure, but it gives it a good um, gliding. Okay, make, don't miss the fingertips and your nails. Okay. In between your fingers and your wrist. So let's start from the very top part of, so everything travels from your heart to the fingertips, has to go back from the fingertips to the, to the, uh, to the chest. So first we are gonna open the, the destination, the last destination first by doing just nice and easy. I mean, we did the warm up earlier, so this is pretty open already, but Let's just do nice and easy shoulder rolls. And now you're gonna do just bend and straighten your elbows. So this one, so palm side is up, okay. Now, Get your palm side toward each other. Just get your elbows moving. Now you want to get your palm side down and up and down. Okay, now let's do the wrist. Um, circles and we're doing this to warm up and also to make you kind of notice how you're feeling how your wrist is doing is one section kind of weird or jerky or not smooth just just notice don't judge but just notice okay circle the other way Just notice how that feels. Okay. Now we're gonna start from fingertips. You are going to make a kind of like a funny fist. Let's start from the very top part. Start from the tip of the finger, make everything bent. Open, open, close. Start from the fingertip. Fingertip comes in, up, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Focus on starting from the very top. So you're starting this, this joint first. Top, in, top, in. Focus on getting all the joints of the fingers moving, okay? Now, you are now focusing on opening the palms. So it's the opposing muscles to what closes your hand. You're gonna work on opening. Open, relax. When you relax, it just relax. You don't have to make the fist. Open, relax. Open, relax. Open, relax. Open, relax. You don't have to close, open, relax. Push it, open, relax. Open, relax. So focus is when you're open, relax. Open, relax. Open, relax. Open, relax. Okay, now it's the fun part. Now, let's work on one hand first. So when you make the fist, See the knuckles and you want to touch the knuckle just like when you did the, uh, when we did the uh, moving the skin. Push in and just kind of shake around, circle, make a circles to make 
this skin move. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So making the skin over your knuckles move. Okay. And now slide your hand toward. So direction is toward, always toward the distal to the center of your body, okay? Knuckles to the wrist, knuckles to the wrist, okay? Okay, now we're gonna work on your fingers. Again, from the tip to the knuckles. The side of your finger, slide your fingers down, back to center, down, down. Slide, 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 okay? Now move on to the ring finger. Slide, slide, slide. The side, be gentle. Now middle finger. Slide, slide. Now index finger. Okay, now thumb, the side here, the side. Okay, now back to your back of your hand between your little finger and the, uh, a ring finger. So the between, you're gonna go between. So, you see, go from the knuckle area between the knuckles towards your uh, wrist. So maybe like nice and slow, five or six times. Okay. And now move up. So between the ring finger knuckles, knuckle to the uh, middle finger knuckle. I'm gonna go in between the bone. Okay, now middle finger knuckle and the index finger knuckle. Okay, now here between thumb and index. And you could also just I give a good massage right there. Okay, now make a little three sections. So, so that's first line, second line, and the knuckle. So first line from here, you make the gentle Just gentle, gentle uh, from um, toward the wrist and go up a little mid hand to the wrist. Okay, now from the knuckle, knuckles to the wrist. Very good. Okay, now the inside so from, uh, make the, uh, again, three sections of your forearms in the, uh, in the palm side. So middle toward the elbow. Go up. So you're moving up, but direction is always towards your heart, okay? The mid part. And now wrist. Okay, same thing on the other side, on the back hand side, toward your elbow, move up, but direction is always towards your elbow. Okay, 
So it's then get the size, all size from the wrist to your elbow. Okay. Now moving on to the other side. So first move that skin over knuckles using your other palm. You can do a side to side movement or circular movement, whichever you're comfortable with. Okay, now slide your hands from your knuckle, knuckles to wrist. Now each fingers, side, side of your fingers, right? Gentle slide, tip to the knuckle. Okay, ring finger. Middle finger. Index finger. And a thumb. Now we're gonna go in between. So the last knuckle to the second to the last. Push, you can use right here. You can do the index finger or I use, I hold on to my hand and I use my thumb. But just do whatever you're comfortable with and most natural. Okay, moving on between the knuckles, between the um, ring finger and middle finger. Just go in between the bones. Okay. Now between middle finger and index finger. Okay, between index and thumb. Now give a little massage right there. Okay, now you're gonna slide your hand, start, um, do another three sections from like the lower part to the wrist, always towards your wrist. Okay, move up like mid hand to the wrist. Okay, from your knuckles to the wrist. Okay, now the forearms. So inside from the closest to again, Divide this into three from the upper part to your elbow in inside of your elbow. Move up, so mid part of your forearm to your elbow. Okay, now the wrist all the way up to your elbow. Okay, with your hand. Same thing, upper part to the elbow, okay, mid part. Now from the wrist, okay, 
Okay, now get the side all the way from your wrist to your elbow. Let's get your wrist circles again. And again, notice, is it, is it better, same? Is it smoother? Just notice, has it made any differences? Go the other way or didn't work? Just notice. Okay, now palm side up and bend your elbows down, up, down, move your elbow joints, palm side facing each other, up, down, up, up, down. Now palm side facing down, up, 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 down Five big circles. Up, breathe in. Okay, that's your hands. How was it? Beautiful. Good? Oh yes, very good. Right. <laughs> a, a little tingle here. <laughs> I yeah, know. I do feel smoother. That that good. movement at the good, end good. was smoother. No, right. no snap, crackle, and pops. Oh, good. <laughs> we got rid of that. Nice. Okay, so let's do. Let's move back a little. Still, um, stay seated, but make sure you have some space in front of your chair. Oh, I forgot about this thing. Remember when we talked about the uh, we talked about the foot bath last week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like for the foot bath, but this is what I have. And I um, looked up on so Amazon sells if you look up foot bath bucket. Don't get the one that plugs in, but it's just the bucket. And this is really, I, I like this, but any kind of plastic bucket that fits your feet, um, that'll work. But what I like about this is the depth. It's, it's a good depth and goes to like my mid cap. So it, it gets a little higher up. And also, um, this one, I think this is like a medium size, but I am size eight feet and this is just right. So if you have a uh, larger than size eight, you need to like make sure you get the measurement right. But I love these, I use this. Okay, so mm -hmm. we are going to, let me readjust my, Can you see me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is a good um, a warm up or the things to do. Uh, Larry, this goes to you <laughs> in your cap, um, and also uh, to for prevention of the nighttime Charlie horses. Um, try this and see if this works because. When we are, when we sit a lot, um, the air in our homes, you know, the bottom part of the home is always cooler. So, which is our feet are. So um, if you don't, if you haven't noticed your feet and your ankles get really tight and cold. So um, that's why it's important to do um, the foot bath or if you move, um, it increases the circulation and it's, you know, it's just think about all the muscles and tendons around your ankles. It's, it's, and it's connected to your knees, connected to your hips. And when we talk about the um, meridians later, but it's like 
six important meridians runs um, around your ankles too. And that all it's mostly connected to the upper part of your body, even your face and your head. So let's work on your ankles. We did this last week, but I just wanted to make sure to review. Okay, so start with one leg up. I wanna make sure that you can see. You can see my feet, yes? Yes. Okay. So if you have a, if you have been to my always active, this is, you guys are familiar with this. But when you're doing this, make sure your back is not too relaxed. So you wanna sit up tall. But when you're sitting up tall, make sure your shoulders are not crunching, right? Keep your shoulders down and always breathe naturally. One leg up and you probably already feel your thigh muscles working. Make sure you're, you feel that muscle working. Make sure nothing hurts. The burning of the muscle is good, but the pain is not good. Using the ankle joint, you can point and flex. Don't force it, but keep moving. We're gonna do 15, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, five more, one, two, three, four, five, other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, five more, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now you're gonna bend almost to the ground and you're gonna come up, down, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more. One, two, three, four, five, and switch. Up, feel your thigh muscle working to make your leg straight at your ankle joint. You're gonna point and flex 15 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, one, two, three, four, five, other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, bend your knee down, don't touch the floor and come back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. And let's do same thing one more time. Up, feel your thigh muscle working, point and flex 15 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more. Four, three, two, one. Circles. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then your knee down, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, and switch again. Up, last set, point and flex. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, one, two, three, four, five, circle the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, one, two, three, four, five, bend your knee down, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, one, two, three, four, five, and down. So you're going to stand up slowly. And if you can get either behind your solid chair or anything that you could hold on to, I'm gonna go sideways. So if you see me. Feet are about your hip width apart, really carefully. You're gonna go up on your toes, okay? So when you go up on your toes, think about spreading your toes, spreading your toes, okay? You wanna focus, you wanna think about your, all the toes, all the little toes on your feet, okay? Um, not too close, not too wide about your hip width apart, chest is up. So when you go up on your toes, don't lean onto it, make sure your body is staying straight. We're gonna go up on your toes. Let's do 10 times, go slow, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now we're gonna do mini, mini, mini squats. You don't have to go too deep. All you need to do is stick your head, uh, stick your butt back. So don't push your knees forward. So just to here and up. 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very last thing we're going to do down and up. Two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six. Sorry, I have one more thing to do. Seven, I lied. Eight, nine, ten. This is actually the most important thing for you. Yeah, step back, can you see? Step back with one leg, front knee is bent, back leg is straight, heel is down. So you should feel stretch on your calf and also the front part of your thigh. And you wanna get deep enough to feel a good stretch, a comfortable stretch. I'm not, you don't have to force the pull. 
So make sure you're comfortable and just kind of breathe naturally, slowly to kind of relax into that stretch. Okay, now slowly switch, step back. The key is to keep the back leg straight and heel down. So if, if it's too much, move in a little bit, but make sure you can keep your feet flat and heel down and chest up. And keep breathing. I'm gonna do one more each on the on the side or both sides. Switch your legs. So the most important thing is to keep the back leg straight, feet flat, heel on the floor, and the comfortable stretch. and switch again same thing legs back leg straight heel down feel comfortable stretch on your calf and breathe Feet about your hip width apart. Let's do a little breathing in with your shoulders. Pull your shoulders back. Breathe out. Shoulders down. Arms forward. Two more. Breathe in. Back and down. Last one. Up. Back and open your arms. Breathe in and relax. And you're done. You survived week two. Well done. Well done. Thanks to you. Thank Great. You. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. Care. Thank, Thank you, Akino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next week we're going to talk about lower body. Yes. Thank you, Akio. Thank, okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much, Akio. Merry Christmas. Good holiday. Have a nice year. Have a nice Christmas tomorrow. Merry Christmas.